The MacBook Air is designed to live in a wireless world, and we're going to test that wireless connectivity right now. So I have before me a complete wireless universe. I've got a couple of computers here, and I got peripherals galore. I got your mouse, I got your iPod, I got your wireless printer, I got the wireless router. Now, all these things are going to fit nicely into our new wireless digital lifestyle. So let's play Connect the Air. First, let's talk peripherals. There's two ways to connect your computer, to the internet or a printer or any peripheral. We can connect wirelessly or using wires. Now, if we connect using wires, we're going to use one of two types of wires for the most part, either USB or Ethernet. Now, Ethernet allows us to connect to the internet and sometimes to printers. We use USB cables to connect keyboards, mice, cameras, iPods, and printers if we're not using Ethernet for that printer. Then we've got our two wireless standards. You've got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Think of Bluetooth as replacing all of the USB cables in your lives, and Wi-Fi replaces the Ethernet cables. So mice, keyboards, they're going to connect through Bluetooth, along with some Bluetooth-capable printers. The rest of our printers and our internet connections is all going to happen through Wi-Fi. So let's look at how a network gets built, and we're going to start right here with our router. This is a spectacular router, Apple's Airport Extreme. It supports 802.11a, b, g, and n standards. Now, the Airport Extreme manages access to the internet and all of our computers talking to one another over our network. It also is going to facilitate the sharing of files over our local network from computer to computer. An example would be normal file sharing, sharing documents back and forth or media back and forth to things like Apple's TV or sending songs to our music system. It manages all of those things. Now, the newest version of the Airport Extreme have something called time capsules. They include built-in hard drives for backing up all of your computers. It is an awesome concept, and the router is the perfect device for becoming your main backup location. We're going to be looking at time capsule in detail on a future show. So we've got our router, the base of our network, which is connected to the internet. We also have another router called the Apple Airport Express. Now the Airport Express is also a router, but this one we use instead of doing direct access to the internet, we use it to extend our network for media sharing. It usually ends up plugged into a wall socket. In this case here, we've got it plugged into a power bar, but then through a cable, we plug it into a music player. In this case, we've got it connected to our boom box. So now we can send music from any of the computers on our network, from Mac or Windows computers, through this system to the boombox. Now, it doesn't have to be a boombox. It could be a tuner, an iPod dock, a stereo, or a home theater system. The Airport Express extends our network for entertainment through our whole home. So let's keep on looking at our network. Next up, we've got our printer. And this one is HP's PhotoSmart C8180. Beautiful wireless printer because it's enabled for both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Now, I've got it set up for Wi-Fi for all of my computers to print to it, but if I had a Bluetooth phone or something like that, I could also connect to it through Bluetooth. Now, that covers all of our resources. So let's move on to our computers, where we spend our time. I've got my MacBook, my old MacBook, and my new MacBook Air. Now, neither one of them is wired into the network. In fact, neither one of them is wired into anything. They both connect through the wireless resources. So my Air is connected to both the internet and the local network through Wi-Fi. And it's connected to the mouse here through Bluetooth. So there's no wires so far. Ah, but I do have some wires for my MacBook Air. Even in the wireless world, there's times that we want to use cables. In this case here, I've got an iPod cable. Why would I want to use an iPod cable? I'd want to use an iPod cable because not only can I transfer files back and forth from my computer to my iPod with these cables, but the USB cable for the iPod is also a charging mechanism. So even in a wireless world, you still need a few wires, which is why we still have things like USB ports in the air. So let's actually start doing a few things wirelessly with our network right now. And what I'm going to do is on the air, I'm going to print from my air to the wireless printer. We can see that that's simple. No cables connected, but the HP printer is going to accept the file and print it off for me wirelessly. And while it's printing, I'd like to have a little music playing, so I'm going to send some music to my Airport Express, actually to my boombox here, and this is a beautiful thing. With the Airport Express, we plug it in. It's very simple to configure, and once you've done that, within iTunes on any computer, PC or Mac, you can just go down to the bottom here of the screen, and you can choose what you want the output of iTunes to be. You can have it to your local computer speakers, to any speakers that are hooked up to your computer, or if you choose the Airport Express, you can use the wireless network then to send the music to the any express station, which is then going to have it plugged in to any media player that you have out there, be it a boombox, be it your home theater system, whatever. So now you can share music through your entire home from any computer. 
Now, our wireless networks at the home or office are really marvelous creations. In the Mac world, the special Apple spin on things like the inclusion of time capsule for backup and air tunes for playing your music, that makes something good that much better. In just a few moments, we're going to add yet another layer to the whole network story, and I guarantee you, it's going to be a touching experience.